Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on DarkSec. Today we're going to be taking a look at the room Overly FS CVE 2021-3493 on Trihackney. Exploit a 2021 kernel vulnerability in Ubuntu to become root almost instantly. And this is a really scary vulnerability that we've very recently seen. Uh, this is something that... Um, it was released, I believe, a couple weeks ago, and it's definitely something you're going to want to keep an eye on, especially if you have any outdated Linux servers, because they're probably vulnerable to this. Uh, it's more specifically Ubuntu in this case. So let's go ahead and dive right into task one. What is OverlayFS? OverlayFS is a Linux kernel module that allows the system to combine several mount points into one so that you can access all the files from each within one directory structure. It's often used by live USBs or some other specialist applications. One use is having a read-only root file system and another partition overlaid with that to allow applications to write to a temporary file system. More resources are included in the final task uh, for the reading if you'd like to learn more about overlay FS and this exploit. And then you can see the room banner was made by that individual and we can go and mark that as complete. And move it to task two overlay fs exploit all right about the vuln it looks like we have a machine attached to this so i'm going to go ahead and start that and then we'll start our attack box and while those start we'll go ahead and start reading about the vuln recently ssd disclosure released a proof of concept and a great explanation for an ubuntu kernel exploit and we can check that out over here which i'll open up in another tab this vulnerability is particularly serious as OverlayFS is a kernel module that is installed by default on Ubuntu 18.04 server. If the system is vulnerable, you can very easily escalate from any user to root as long as you can run a binary. If there isn't a C compiler installed on the machine, you can compile the binary statically elsewhere and just copy it over. And that's very common, especially when you're doing privas, if you... Um, have a good idea of what the machine architecture is, you'll spin up a copy of it, uh, just grabbing like the Ubuntu, uh, in this case it'd be the Ubuntu ISO off of their website, stand it up, compile it elsewhere, and then just transfer it over, nice and easy. Credentials for SSH. So once this spins up, we're gonna go ahead and SSH into that machine, and then we should be able to compile our exploit and run it. And we'll go ahead and give that a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording, and when we're back, this should be ready to go. All right, there we go. So the attack box is up. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. It looks like we already have one open, which we can press enter through, start another one, and let's check our IP. SSH, and I'm guessing, yep, there we go. Overlay at 10, 10, 253, uh, or 21. And again, make sure that you type your IP there, not mine, because it probably won't be the same uh, so it looks like our password is try hack me one two three and there we go so we can see that we've logged in via ssh to this vulnerable box so we'll mark this first one as completed since we've spun it up and then this one as well since we've sshed in grab the source code for the exploit from ssd's disclosure here and save it as exploit dot c on the target machine let's see if it's here it is not so we'll go ahead we can grab that and Okay, so that's going to this link, it seems. Let me make that a little bit bigger and see if we can find the actual code here. Now, one thing to note with uh, something like this, you always want to review the code before you actually run this. So just keep that in mind. Uh, within a professional environment, going through and auditing this code to make sure that you understand what it's actually doing is what you would want to do before we just go through and spit it onto a machine. So it looks like this is our code and we can go ahead and click the copy button and it should be there we go so it's on our clipboard and we can go over here and put it on the machine clipboard and we can do nano uh let's see exploit.c and now we'll go ahead and paste it and there we go and we'll go ahead and save it and we can see that we now have that saved on this target machine mark that as complete and then compile with gcc uh we're gonna go ahead and just grab the command from the hints there we go. So GCC-O exploit, uh, and then we need to target exploit.c. So we'll do GCC-O specified for output, and we'll just name it exploit, and then we're gonna target exploit.c. And there we go. 
That's actually very rare that it compiled without errors. It's very common for exploits like this to spit out a ton of warnings. Uh, if that happens to you, hopefully it shouldn't in this case since I didn't get any, but if you are ever compiling an exploit like this, don't be too surprised if you get a bunch of warnings. I'm fairly certain Dirty Cow actually has uh, this very same problem where it just spits out a bunch of warnings. So now we can go ahead and we'll do ls and it should be executable. And now if we run it, and run who am I we can see that we are root uh, a little bit covered by the clipboard tag but we've got that we've managed to successfully escalate now very cool very very quick exploit and you can see how this is very dangerous uh, this is something that if you are uh, looking to take exams soon um, specific like certification exams in mind this is probably something to have on your radar just because things like this uh, this is going to be very useful in the penetration testers toolbox for quite some time, um, especially because it's a privesk and it's something that not as likely to get patched as something like a remote code execution where you have to patch that immediately. People don't necessarily uh, will have that same associated level of concern with things like that. Let me see if I can move that down. There we go. Um, so something that especially if you are performing a pen test, this is probably going to be very, very useful to you. That being said, let's go ahead and we'll cd to root ls and grab our flag. I'm going to move this up again. There we go. Uh, cat flag.txt and we'll copy that. Copy and then we'll grab it off of there. And there we go. That's going to do it for that task. Let's go ahead and take a look at task three further reading. Want to know more about overlayfs? Uh, so there is a reference right there on read-only root file system with overlayfs to allow applications to run normally. Uh, we have the Arch Wikis page on overlayfs, uh, and lovely nod to the Arch joke of I use Arch, by the way. Uh, and then some references specifically on this CVE. So one thing to note, uh, this is interesting mostly uh, as well when you consider what this was released slightly after. Uh, so this, uh, if you're watching this in the future, this room was released not very long after you're the jellyfish, um, and this uh, that box had this patched. Um, that was meant to be a potential uh, area of difficulty where you, running this, it is an Ubuntu server, um, and you would think that it would be vulnerable to something like this, and it has been patched on that system. So it's meant to be a point of confusion, that's actually why it was released alongside of it, to make people think that, hey, wait, can I run this on there? No, you cannot. So in case you got stuck with that, that was intentional. Um, and that was the administrative staff uh, having a good time. So we'll go ahead and mark that as complete. And that is going to do it for this room. Nice, short and sweet. Again, this is something to have in your arsenal, uh, especially for the next few months at the minimum, because this will come up and it's going to be something that is going to be very, very useful, especially for quick privacy. So that's going to do it for this video. As always, I have the TryHackMe and DarkSect discords linked in the video description below, along with the TryHackMe subreddit. Be sure to check those out, especially if you have any questions. Otherwise, until next time, happy hacking!